Did you know that the adult tree let the child tree to grow in a slower manner than it would like to? This has an efficiency reason. If, if, the, if the tree is growing faster, then the proportion of the wood versus um, air inside the structure is not fine, and the, uh, the, the tree cannot withstand for the weather conditions. We live in an environment where we are always encouraged to speed. Speed and change. Of course, it might be a good idea, but also it should imply some efficiency. My message today is very clear. Speed is killing the planet. It's time to focus on efficiency. Of course, I'm not a hypocrite here, and I don't live in a utopic world. I just flew to Vietnam for a tech convention, and actually, uh, you, there is no other way to, to, uh, to travel there. So, but, you know, the amount of CO2 emissions that we emit by a single passenger, it's harmful for our environment. I do believe that the future of transportation in general is based on electrical energy, which is more efficient and more sustainable. When we are talking here about electrical energy in transportation, we have two options. Either we have a vehicle which is powered by the grid, so we are connected to the grid and we take the power from there, or where actually the investment on the infrastructure is very expensive, or we are talking here about a smart energy autonomous vehicle, which can be a subject for optimization problems. I'm giving you here an example like, uh, we are talking here about the electrical cars, drones, or even nowadays electrical rockets. Of course, there are many trends in mobility, and I'm giving you like one, sim one simple example regarding the, the infrastructure connection. So you have your electrical car, you go to the train station, you go, after you travel for a while, you take your Hyperloop and you arrive at your destination. By the way, I'm here to talk a bit also about the Hyperloop, because actually my name is kind of branded with the Hyperloop industry. And I'm going to explain you very simple what Hyperloop means. Hyperloop is a new mode of transportation, which involves two different parts. So we're talking here about a capsule, like a train, in a, in a low pressure environment. Let's say 5 to 10% of the Earth's atmosphere. Due to the fact that in this low pressure environment, like a tube, uh, there, are, there is no friction with the air, we might have many advantages. Many people think that one of the, the most important advantage is the speed. I do believe that the most important advantage of Hyperloop is the energy efficiency and the grams of CO2 emissions per passengers per kilometer. We can define Hyperloop as being as fast as a plane, as convenient as a, as a train. It means that it's sustainable and efficient. Of course, I think we should stay efficient in, also in our personal lives. So let me tell you a personal story about efficiency in life. First of all, I think one of the most important qualities a person can have in this life is to stay curious. Because if you stay curious, you are able to diversify your activities in life and you are, you are be able to be more creative. When you are more creative, actually, you see many different activities and you can bring together what is in your left with what is in your right and actually create an integer of a project, which bring you, brings you to the innovation. I just want you to remember this story. Approximately seven years ago, I was carrying, carrying luggages in a hotel. You know, I was doing it with passion, as everything I do in my life. And in one of the days, it was um, a tourist on the Romanian Black Sea Resort, which came and he said, a very clever old man, he said, you know, Dennis, it's your perspective how you see your job, more than building your arms, uh, to diversify your people that you are going to meet. Because at that hotel, there are different types of people, like different profiles, different ages, social classes. And you might take an advantage of that. 
By the way, he was a physics professor. I quit the job because I thought that is not for me. I remember about this wise old man that told me about the physics. He told me, like, just try to stay curious in your life. And I went home, I closed the door, I closed the windows, I covered the windows, and I opened a physics book. I think it was my, the, my, portal, my portal to the future. Actually, I entered a very good technical university in Bucharest, where I was studying nanotechnologies. Doesn't matter. Actually, I do Hyperloop, so there is no much link between Hyperloop and nanotechnologies. But the idea of being curious and reading what's new and trying to bring together different subsystems and different views or visions in my life brought me in a situation that I was not, I was not be able to survive if I was not understanding something. I was kind of free control and I was trying to get every knowledge. Of, of course, I was fast, I had speed, but not really efficient. In one day, I was reading Reddit. You know what Reddit is, right? It is like a social media of science. And Elon Musk actually launched a new, a new mode of transportation called Hyperloop. And he decided to create a new competition. One of the readers commented his post, who wants to create a Reddit loop team? And I was curious enough to say, OK, also me. I, I, I really like this idea, even if I honestly didn't know what Hyperloop is. So I said, OK, let's create this team. And we opened like a Slack account where we were discussing all these ideas. We we're people from the entire world. We didn't know each other. We didn't, know, uh, we didn't meet before. It was the first time when we were discussing, and, but we, we knew that all of us, we have two visions that are kind of intersected, to stay curious and to bring this mode of transportation alive. You know, many of my colleagues after the lecture, they're saying, okay, do you want to go for a beer or do you want to go to work in a park or something? And I was like, no, I'm going to my virtual friends to talk with, with them about Hyperloop. And they, they even didn't understand like, what I was doing. So some time passed, and there were, up, there were around 10,000 teams registered for this competition. So everyone, as a small group, could actually participate for this mode of transportation. We were the Reddit Loop team, and uh, we qualified in the first 100 teams in the final of the competition. That was held in College Station near Houston, where actually it's a small student village. We met there for the first time. <laughs> it was unbelievable <laughs> because, uh, like, fortunately we had the same t-shirts, so we recognized each other. But more than that, actually we were like, that guy that was doing the aeroshell and you're the guy that was doing the structure, you, you're doing the, I don't know, oh, yeah, you are, yeah. So it was a bit awkward at the beginning, but actually we said, let's have fun. Let's have joy. So we presented the project. We're very honored and glad that Elon Musk chose to come to our uh, table to see exactly what we have and what we presented. The first phase of the competition it was just about design calculations and nothing to demonstrate, no nothing to prove. So it was nice. We didn't have any expectation because we knew that there are s stronger teams um, at the competition. And the ceremony award arrived, where actually the announcer said, yeah, the fifth place, the fourth place, the third place, the second place. And at that moment, one of my colleague said, OK, guys, let's go to cheer for a beer and let's be happy that we went here and it's been a nice adventure. We had a nice time together in US, in Houston. And at that point, the director of SpaceX 
took the mic and announced the winner team. So guess what? We won the Best Design Award at the Elon Musk competition, and we emphasized with our capsule with efficiency and also with scalability of the system. So we did the first scalable Hyperloop prototype in the world. We actually designed it. At that moment, we didn't have any money, so we started, to, uh, we started a crowdsourcing campaign where all the Silicon Valley companies joined us and many other private um, sponsors helped us with, with money. I moved to US. Uh, we stayed in the same Airbnb house together. Just imagine, like, we're working 16 hours per day, but Friday night and Saturday, it, it was crazy. We're, like, <laughs> living 15 people together. We're going to San Francisco, having fun, and so on and so forth. Actually, the time flew. And one, one year after, in January 2017, it was the competition weekend. So it was the continuity of the design competition. In order to actually have a prototype that works, that you can test, Elon Musk built this vacuum tube in Los Angeles, where we managed to bring, all the teams managed to bring around 20 capsules, and we tested. So up to 10,000 teams registered, there are just 20 capsules in Los Angeles at that moment. We had several issues. We had several failures. We failed in front of Elon Musk. We failed many times because our design was so complicated. Our design included, for example, an active levitation. Don't worry. Um, if you didn't hear about the active levitation, it sounds like science fiction, and yeah, you are not far, far away from that. So we, of course, again said, OK, guys, we had a nice adventure. Let's cheer for a beer. We actually scheduled a party in the Santa Monica. And all of the team like left there. We are three or four, four people at the ceremony. So there are four prizes. Again, the same announcer took the mic, said, so the safety award is going to a team, the, the construction award is going for a team, and the speed award is going for that team. Again, we said, OK, guys, it's, let's go to the party to join the others. I was with, the, the, um, uh, with Tom and Brent. And again, the director of SpaceX took the mic, and he said, and for the Reddit Loop team, we give them the Innovation Award. So we won the Innovation Award from Elon Musk one year later after we won the Best Design Award for the Hyperloop capsule. It's been amazing. Th those experiences changed me a lot, and I've learned, I've learned a lot of things because I managed to stay curious, and I work with people from different parts of engineering. So it, it was really nice. After that, we said, and now what? So it's going to be the second competition. We wanted to participate. We knew what, what was wrong in our design. We knew what we have to improve, and we're almost sure that for this time, we are going to make it even better. We registered for the competition, but guess what? Elon Musk did not allow us to participate anymore in the competition. It was so frustrating for me. I was like, why? Afterwards, I was in the US not having a very good vision of, with this team, finishing between times my bachelor studies in Romania. So I said, OK, guys, you want to, my team actually wanted to make some drones to, to be able to sell them. I said, for me, it's not challenging enough. I, I cannot stay with you here. So you are my brothers. We stayed together. We did crazy things. We won all the awards in Hyperloop. But I don't trust anymore in the project. And I left the team. I wanted to make, I was in a very bad period of my life, again. And I wanted to make a PhD. I actually graduated the bachelor in Romania, where I was the valedictorian. And I was, uh, I was actually admitted for a good university in the US in order to continue my studies in Hyperloop. And also, I was admitted for a master program in Switzerland. And I said, OK, I'll go to US. Of course, it's a PhD. I'm going directly for the PhD. But actually, I failed the TOEFL exam. Not once, not twice, 10 times. 
okay, what should I do now? The only chance was to move to Switzerland, to the school I am now, in EPFL. I came as a master's student. But you know, I arrived from LA, from the sunny LA, in Geneva, in September, when it was raining. It's like, oh my God, where did I arrive? Nobody's on the street. I, you know, it's like, wow. I asked myself if it, was, if it was a right decision. I said, okay, maybe it's just this weekend, so it will be better. But actually, after two weeks, it was still raining. I was also very bored staying in a chair listening a lecture because we had these adventures together. <laughs> we, I mean, we did a lot of things, and staying in a chair and listening to a professor talking about, uh, I don't know, a transistor or these kind of things, I was like, really? What, what should I do? So my frustration didn't pass at that moment. And I was still thinking about the competition of Elon Musk. And I said, okay, I'm going to create a new team in Switzerland. I'm going to win again. I created my own team in Switzerland. Everything went well. After we qualified in the final, I didn't finish my master. And the professor told me, come to the PhD directly. So actually, I dropped the master. I entered the PhD in Hyperloop. And I created this team. We went again. We went in Los Angeles. The same story with Elon Musk. Of course, we won again the first prize for safety and the third place for speed. Actually, the, the speed prize is the only one that I did, didn't manage to get the first, but there is time for that. Now, I'm in front of you. I'm 25. I have a startup here in Switzerland where we are 25 plus team members. Um, and we develop this mode of transportation between Geneva and Zurich. So just imagine a way to travel between Geneva and Zurich in 17 minutes with an energy, so not the entire cost, the energy price cost, eight francs per passenger. This means to stay sustainable and efficient. When I looked to the guy, to the boy that I was seven years ago, I think I changed and I've learned a lot. But one thing that I want to do not change in my life is the, uh, the capability to stay curious. So if we stay curious, then we can diversify our work, we can be more creative, and we can be more innovative. Being more innovative, we can be more efficient, and we can grow efficiently and sustainable as the child tree. And this is what I wish for you. Thank you. <laughs>